I, I came out there to speak and Keith, before I even entered, he sent me such a nice email and welcomed me before I got there. And I, I was blessed to be there and actually meet Keith. And I sent a little video to your, to your community and your staff. And so uh, I want to give your staff, I know, cause they, they're going through a lot of changes too. A little shout out, right? So to everyone working out media, cause you know, a lot of times it's focused on the person opening it, but all of you are opening the school this year. It's not, it's not just you on your own. So uh, Keith, thanks for taking the time out of your super busy schedule. I know you got a million things to do, but I know people can learn from you. And that's why I really wanted to um, have you on the podcast. So if you can just kind of tell everyone who you are, what you do today, and kind of how you got to that point, I think that's a great place to start. Sure. Thanks, George. It's great to, to be on your program today. So um, yeah, my name is Keith Fickle, and this is my 30th year in education. Uh been in Fort Bend ISD here in Southwest Houston most of my career. And it's I've moved from being a teacher, a classroom teacher. I was a band director for about 17 years. And then I moved into the ranks of administration um, from being a band director into being an assistant principal, uh, an associate principal, uh, and now a, a principal. So I've been through, I've, the only areas I've not taught, I've not taught elementary, but I've taught middle school most of my career and been a middle school administrator most of my career. So um, I did spend a year of being an assistant principal at a really great school here in our district called Willow Ridge High School, a school with a lot of spirit and pride. Once an eagle, always an eagle. Go ahead, Willow Ridge. <laughs> um, Got to give my shout out to my friends over there at Willow Ridge High School. Um, so, but this is my, really my first year back kind of in the, in the, in the high school realms. Um, so, um, but I've been, I was the principal at Sugarland Middle School, uh, for, for six years. And then the last year or so prior to the, this school year, I, I spent, I guess, building a community and, and working with, uh, students and staff and parents and building, uh, working slowly at building our, our community here, uh, to launch Almeda Crawford High School, which is named after an incredible uh, veteran educator of 40 plus years at another uh, campus here in the district, which is known as the flagship, the original high school in Fort Bend. It's Dulles High School, they're the Vikings. But Mrs. Crawford was an English teacher there for close to 40 years and uh, still living in the Houston area. And uh, what a great testament that this school is for her uh, and to give back to her and to her family for the impact that she has made on Th literally thousands and thousands of, of, of families over the course of 40 years. So here we are opening a brand new high school. We open on August the 9th with about 600 kids in grades nine and 10. And everybody's new to one another. They're new to me. I'm new to them. The staff is new to one another. The students maybe are a little bit, um, you know, not necessarily new to one another because we were relieving a, a high school that desperately needed the, the relief for, for overcrowding because we're, we're growing so, so strongly here. But, uh, you know, we're, we're focusing on um, direction first and speed later, or one of our values that we're, we're working on. We don't have a set of formal core values yet, um, but one of them is that we're working with is this idea of valuing direction over speed. So, you know, we're not, we're not going to be able to be in, you know, two or three weeks what other people may have experienced at a school that's been open for 13 or 15 years, Right. right. So, and they, they had to have their Genesis story. So this year is, you know, the Genesis story for, for Almeda Crawford high school, go chargers. So tell, okay. I, I got to ask this. I like, I, I didn't know that part about who the school is named after. I didn't know that. And like, I wish that happened more, you know? So there's so many schools being named after people. This is the first time I've ever heard one being named after a teacher, which I, I love, which is incredible. So like, how did that, how did that come about? Like, how, how did that happen? That's such a, that's awesome. I love that. I I wish that would happen more. And so this is one of the reasons I want to have you on the podcast is I hope somebody hears this in another school district. It's like, yeah, we should start naming our schools after teachers that taught here. Like that's, that's amazing. So how did that come about? So formerly the school, this school uh, I'm at Crawford high school is known as high school number 12. So we're the 12th high school in the district. We're in a district of 80,000 kids. Mm -hmm. And so, um, I was named principal in, I guess, late March of 2021, uh, right after we had our little ice Mageddon thing here in Texas when the everything froze. <laughs> right. Power grid kind of nearly wow. failed. Um, I forgot it was called that. I forgot it. that was the name of it. It's, it is anything but cold right now, let me tell right. you. Right. So, of course, you were here, so you know. I, I know. It is, it is hot. So, um, 
around that same time, maybe March in that year, not too long after I was, I was named principal, the district always, our, our district's protocol is to gather input from the community and stakeholders about like, what would be, you know, a great name for whatever school. So Crawford High School is the high school that's opening now, but we also have two elementary schools that are opening, that opened along with us. And that's Ferguson Elementary and Butcher Elementary. And so for both, all three schools, they put together, they solicited names of, of people uh, from the community who they think would be worthy. And as you would imagine, all kinds of names from every walk of life, right. education, medicine, arts, and all that sort of stuff. Um, and they settled on, after having a committee uh, work on you know, parsing through all this, the, the suggestions, and they they arrived at Almeda Crawford um, because number one, there had not been a secondary, or excuse me, a high school named after a female uh, in Fort Bend. So it was fitting uh, for that. Now we do have another secondary school that's named after a female and that's C Krista McAuliffe uh, okay. Middle School. That's what actually feeds my previous campus, Willow Ridge. And it's a great campus. So, but that was a real big honor for, um, for Mrs. Crawford and her family to wow. have been named that, uh, to have the school rather named after them. So we had to stop calling it High School 12, and now we're calling it Almeda Crawford High School. And uh, Much so, better name. Much better yeah, name than High School 12. Absolutely. High School 12 sounds like a sci-fi movie. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, I, and I've been blessed over the last probably year and a half uh, after the school was named after her. She yeah. and her family, uh, we have connected. We've met on a couple of occasions Her. Her son Tori and her daughter uh, Rhonda, uh, we've we've met to talk about all kinds of things uh, about the school. We we got their input. In fact, you see behind me on my my I guess my background, you see our campus logo and the colors. So she was an integral, and she and her family were an I integral part of, of coming up with not only the colors and the color scheme, but also the the mascot. Our students uh, were involved in in those selections, and and not just the selections, but also the design of the logo itself. So she and her family were. In all of those meetings and so what you see kind of behind me I'll, I'll be like the weatherman and move out of the way here you see that our lightning bolt c uh that's kind of like for being charged up and then you yeah. got the horse that's kind of this idea of forging ahead so if you look inside the, the horse's head you can actually see lightning bolts within the hair so um yeah. it's got this 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 idea of energy because mrs uh, mrs crawford's thing is she brings a lot of energy to the classroom um, okay, you know, so it's okay. I'm gonna I'm gonna give you a full disclosure moment here. I was I was actually seeing the horse behind you, and I was thinking that's kind of a bummer that you already have that because like that would have been a great opportunity to like build it with students. So I, I wasn't gonna ask that, and then I'm so glad you said that. I was like, oh, that's that's wonderful because that's how it should be, right? Like there's there's a certain ownership when we actually have a say in building a new school that it's not just, you know, somebody sent it off to somebody and we had no part of the decision. Now there's some ownership over that too. The, the other thing I, I, I love about this story is a lot of times when schools are named after people, it's after people that are no longer with us. And I'm all about, you know, um, you know, giving these accolades to people while they still can appreciate them, not after the fact. And, and so I love that. And I love that she was part of it. I love your students are part of the design. That's absolutely, I love that. So I hope, I, I truly hope people are listening to that process and asking themselves, how do we do that as we're creating new spaces? <laughs>